this video we would be continuing our discussion on the mathematics of quantum mechanics as we are learning the mathematics of quantum mechanics starting from complex number it would help us to learn more about the details of quantum physics and the objective of this series of videos is to lay you out the entire foundation of mathematics in a very clear and easy manner so in today's video we would be discussing and talking about euler's number Euler's formula and polar form these are very important in further study of quantum physics so do not skip this video watch it take a note and it would be easier for you to proceed further in the areas of complex mathematics of quantum physics my name is shonak and you are watching this video on my channel physics for students a warm welcome to this watch this video so first let us see what are the topics that we are covering so we are covering first we would like to know who was leonard euler the euler's number and its exponential form euler's formula and polar form polar form of complex number and a very interesting fact coming on to you i hope you are liking this series and we would continue this one by one and we will see how it will become useful to learning quantum physics so who was leonard euler well leonard euler was a swiss mathematician physicist astronomer geographer logician and an engineer who founded the studies of graph theory and topology and made many pioneering and influential discoveries in many other branches of mathematics such as analytic number theory complex analysis and infinite simul calculus he introduced much of the modern mathematical terminology and notation including the notion of mathematical function he is also known for his work in mechanics fluid dynamics optics astronomy and music theory euler is particularly credited for popularizing the greek letter pi to denote the ratio of the circle's circumference to its diameter as was well the first using the notation f of x for the value of uh, square root of minus 1 and the greek letter capital sigma to express summations and the greek letter delta for upper case delta for finite differences uh, these are used to represent the sides of the triangle by representing the angles as capital he gave the current definition of the constant base of e the base of the natural logarithm known as the euler's number so here is a brief uh, you know idea about uh, leonard euler as you can see he lost one of his eyes in a malady but he, it didn't stop him Uh, for exploration in his mathematical journey okay so euler's number and its polar form so euler's number uh, you know so far we have seen that z equals to e plus pi uh, in some certain ways it is not well suited for multiplying and dividing complex numbers so we have designed this one e raised to the power ix we will see what it is so this is the base of the natural logarithm as we all know so the cos of x uh, cos x x is the real number and i is the imaginary unit now by far the most importance of this equation is that this establishes the fundamental relationship between trigonometric functions and exponential functions so you can think that it is geometrically a kind of a b of bridging two representations of the same unit complex number in the complex plane so this is the basic importance as we will see the form of the number or the the way we write often changes so euler's number uh, e actually uh, and exponential form e raised to the power x uh, plays a very vital role in mathematics now in order to know the beauty of those two concepts some knowledge of derivative and integral calculus is required however we don't assume that you know calculus and i won't be going ahead with the details of our function is now in general an exponential exponential function refers to any function in the form f of x a raised to the power x or something like that where a is a constant which can be kind of any real number or a complex number and x is real or a complex variable and the notation a raised to the power x actually refers to multiplying a itself by x times so this is important the exponential function and what it denotes let us see some examples for example this one would be 29.79 and you multiply 
82, 82, 82, 82, and then uh, the, uh, the imaginary vanishes and it becomes I. So, uh, what we can say that although we can explicitly and exactly find out an exponential function when given the exponent to be a real integer, we have methods to compute the exponential function for any real or a complex exponent. Okay, so the exponential function has gotten definitely certain benefits. Obviously, when we are learning a particular mathematical formulation, we need to expound on what are the exponential function, why we are doing a talk. So, exponential functions are particularly well suited to model mathematical situations where a constant change in the independent variable, for example, x, makes the dependent variable f of x undergo actually a kind of a proportional change. A proportional change in the sense that if its values get multiplied by a fixed amount or something like that. Say, for example, we take f of x equal to 2, time, 2 raised to the power x. So, what happens is that every time x is increased by 1, the value of x doubles. Now, this actually leads to some of the properties of exponential function. One is, it has got a power of 0, it is 1. It has got two different powers, it gets added. And then this one, uh, it has got a fraction ax by bx. Then if it is inverse, equals to 1 upon a. And this leads to uh, actually a consequence of property first and two is a inverse of x is equals to this. So, uh, I mean to say, we all know this. Uh, these are certain values or I would say uh, properties which sometimes comes as a memorization. But this is a good point to learn. Okay, so the Euler's number has a value and the value is quite weird, right? And the value is something like this, right? So, uh, now what we can see from here is that this E, it is actually an irrational number. It cannot be written as a simple fraction. That is most important. And E is actually the base of the natural logarithm, which was invented by the famous uh, mathematician John Napier. And E is actually found in many interesting areas. So, this is a kind of a graph. I am not showing. Uh, we will prove uh, in some other video, uh, I mean to say, how this value comes to. So, here is a graph and <coughs> you can just compute it. Now, most importantly that f of x e uh, raised to the power x, it has got some uh, very interesting properties and it is, uh, you know, worth noting what those properties are all about. Okay, so the rate of any change of that function at any point of x is actually e x. So, we can say that the slope of e x is e x, which actually means if you take the differentials, then it comes to this, right? So, uh, the concept of slope of a curve, uh, if you are familiar, of e is e x. And uh, if, you're, if you already know calculus, it is to this. Moreover, e raised to the power x has a very nice expansion that can be used to evaluate the value of x. And it looks like this, right? Uh, n, uh, it goes from 0 to infinity, factorial of n, and then this goes to this. Now, since this series, actually what happens, it converges rapidly. We can evaluate e raised to the power x for any real or complex x, uh, complex uh, x, yes, by only adding just a few other terms. So, this is actually, uh, you know, the, some of the properties and how it leads to a nice series of expansion. Okay, there are some of the properties of Euler's formula. For x, if you have got 1, and if you got e raised to the power i equals to cos 1 and i sub 1, then what it suggests that e i is precisely the point of the unit circle whose value is actually 1 radial. This is 1. And if x is pi by 2 and e i pi by 2 equals to cos pi by 2 plus i sine pi by 2 equals to i, then this result is somewhat used in many uh, areas of physics, especially in the area of quantum mechanics. And lastly, the beauty lies in here. If x equals to 2 pi and this value, which means that it has the same value, which is the Euler's identity. And this is one of the most beautiful and the graceful formula that mankind has ever produced. Okay, so we come to Euler's formula and the polar form. Now, any complex number z equals to a plus bi, now this can be written as this. And this also can be written as this, right? I'm just telling you the different ways. So, we rewrote uh, this one and it, we write it in this way. So, the right-hand side of the equation, it, uh, we, are, we will be using cos theta because when we are taking off angle, then x comes as something uh, difficult. 
way. Theta is more or less known to us, so we will be continuing with this. So, unit complex number with an angle theta, and this left hand side actually shows the one radian unit complex number raised to theta value. So, that is why it is I theta. Okay, so we next come to what is called the polar form of complex numbers. Okay, so any complex number uh, z equals to a plus bi can be written in the form of this, right? So, here what we do is that we take the component z is the modulus. We have known about modulus, what we know, right? <coughs> this one, which you have dealt earlier uh, in the uh, last video. I have given in the i button, you can go and check. So, it is the modulus of the, uh, it is the modulus of the z and this theta is the angle, obviously in radian between the real axis and the complex number in the complex plane. Left hand side, there is a uh, illustration, you can see where the z actually lies. So, from here we can deduce that a equals to z cos theta. Uh, this is the projection along the real axis. b equal to z sin theta, obviously with the modulus. This lies the projection along the imaginary axis. And from here we can say that theta equal to arc tan of b upon a or we can say theta is equal to arc sine of b upon z or we can say it is arc cos of a upon z. So, why it is b upon z? Here it is clear, it is the value of the sine and why it is arc cos that is also given. So, I mean to say you can just see the uh, illustration on the left hand side how it is. Now, we further move and what we do is that we replace the values of a and b uh, with those equivalents and we get z plus bi as z cos theta plus i z sin theta and we get z cos theta plus i sin theta. And by using Euler's number, we can conclude that z equals to z e i theta. So, pretty simple. Let, let us see an example of this polar form and things will be much more clear. So, what is the polar form of z equals to phi minus phi y? Now, we need to first find out what is the modulus of z. And we know that we do it and we get the result of square root of 50. And the argument is given by arc tan, which is arc tan of minus 1 from here we get. And we get 3 pi or 7 pi by 4. Now, since the real part of z is positive and its imaginary part is negative, which you can see from the figure, we know that z would lie something between in the fourth quadrant of the complex plane. You can see here and that is why we conclude theta equals to 7 pi by 4. So, this actually gives you a kind of a very easy, clear and uh, comprehensive example. Now, certain facts which are very, 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 very important and I consider to be super interesting. So, if we use theta equals to pi, then we get the famous Euler's identity. And Euler's identity, as we know, it is one of the most important and deeply beautiful mathematical equations. Now, it once, uh, uh, it also contains in one occurrence, three of the most important arithmetical operation and links to five of the most fundamental and celebrated mathematical constant. Let us see what they are. The first one is that the number zero, the additive identity. The second, the number one, which is a multiplicative identity and the number theta uh, pi, which is found around everyone. And even if you have got films in the name of pi, it is found in the mother nature. And the number e is the base of the natural logarithm and most importantly, what we are dealing it with the number i as the imaginary number. These are some of the five most fundamental and uh, most important quite known um, mathematical constants which are linked with Euler number and you see how beautiful it is. So, that is it with this trivia and interesting fact. We take a pause of today's video and in the next video, we would be continuing our journey to explore two more things. One is called periodicity of complex number and how complex numbers, complex conjugates behave in polar form. So, that is it for today's video. Once we complete these two in the next video, we would be next jumping into what is called linear algebra and that would be quite exhaustive. There is a lot of linear algebra deals with quantum physics. Thank you very much for watching this video. This is Seanak signing off from Physics for Students, promising you to come back with few more interesting videos. By this time, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel Physics for Students. Click on the bell icon and click on all to get all the notification from Physics for Students. Please put up your comment. Click on and hit on the like button so that I also get motivated to you know, make further videos. Thank you very much. Have a nice weekend and see you soon. Bye. Thank you for watching this video. We appreciate your time and patience. 
If you want to connect with us and provide further feedback, comment or suggestions, please email us at contact.physicsforstudents at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn. See you soon in the next video.